hello dear student i hope you all are doing well so from today we are going to start our lectures of physics in that we are going to start our first lecture based on first chapter named as rotational dynamics so here dynamic words stand for motion so what we are going to do in this chapter is basically first of all we are going to study circular motion and after that we are going to study rotational dynamics their application but before going to start this chapter we should be clear with a basic concept like what is meant by motion displacement type of motion and circular motion without that we will not able to understand what is meant by rotational dynamics so before going to that let's watch a small video so by watching that video you will be understand what is meant by circular motion what is meant by rotational motion and what is basic difference between circular motion and rotational motion and the example of that so here we are going to start you have to watch this video after that i will give you notes based on that topic so while watching that video just carefully watch that video we studied what motion is we also saw one type of motion called a rectilinear motion it's nothing but straight line motion in this type of motion the path of a moving object is a straight line But what if the path of a moving object is circular? Yes, you guessed it correctly. If an object is moving in circles, it's undergoing circular motion. More accurately, it's defined as the motion of an object along the circumference of a circle. The circumference of a circle is the length of this boundary which is curved. So if an object is moving along the circumference of a circle, we say it's undergoing circular motion. Can you give me any real life examples in which objects execute this type of motion? What about the satellites orbiting the earth? Yes, a satellite orbiting at a certain height is also undergoing circular motion. What other examples of circular motion can you think of? Take a small object and tie it to one end of a rope. Take the other end of the rope in your hand and whirl it around in circles. You see that the object is performing circular motion. Notice that the distance of the stone from your hand is always the same. What about the moving fan? Is it also undergoing circular motion? First, let's only consider the motion of a point on one of its blades. If we switch on the fan, we will see the point moving in circles. So we can say that the blades of the fan are also undergoing circular motion. Now what if I take the fan as a one single object? Can I say that the fan as a whole is moving in circles? No, that would be incorrect. The fan as a whole is not going anywhere. The entire fan is not moving along the circumference of a circle. But which motion is it performing then? The fan is undergoing rotational motion. Before actually defining this type of motion, let's try to understand it first. This rod here is called the axle and the entire fan is spinning around this axle. Or you can also say that the entire fan is spinning around this fixed line. This type of motion is what we call rotational motion. Now we will define it in simple words. A body is said to be performing rotational motion if it's spinning around some fixed line. And the fixed line is also called axis of rotation. What other examples of rotational motion can you think of? What about a rotating wheel? We use the word rotating because it's performing rotational motion. What is axis of rotation in this case? Yes, it lies on the axle of the wheel. So the wheel is also undergoing rotational motion about this fixed line. Other examples of this type of motion can be the earth spinning around its axis and a spinning top. But wait a moment. Let's go back to our example we discussed earlier. When this object was whirled around in circles, we said that it was performing circular motion. 
But here, if we take this line as our axis of rotation, then we can also say that the object is performing rotational motion around this fixed line. So what is the motion of this object? Circular or rotational? What exactly is the difference between the rotational and the circular motion? In all the examples of rotational motion that we saw, the axis of rotation is a part of the object. It is going through the object. But in this case, the axis of rotation is not passing through the object. It's totally separate from the object. Hence, we don't call this motion as rotational motion. This is circular motion and not rotational. So this is the difference between circular and rotational motion. If a body moves along the circumference of a circle, we say that it's performing circular motion. And if the body is spinning around the fixed line, called the axis of rotation, and if that axis of rotation passes through the body, we say that it's undergoing rotational motion. In the next video, we will see one more type of motion. See you there. Dear Bhagavan, you have to ask yourself what is meant by circular motion, what is meant by rotational motion, and what are the difference between them. So let's revise that that if object is moving along a circumference of circle is known as circular motion okay so let's write first of all that the thing is that object moving along circumference of circle is said to be circular motion for example moon revolving around earth what is that motion of a moon around earth or you may say that satellite revolving around earth or earth revolving around sun then what is rotational motion so rotational motion is all the points in the object move a circle about the axis of rotation for example earth spinning around its own axis so, what is the case of earth? The earth particles are equally revolving around the axis of rotation. You can pause this video and you can write in your notebook. I hope you have wrote in your notebook. So, let's move further. The difference between circular motion and rotational motion so what is the basic difference that axis of rotation is a part of object in rotational motion okay what is that axis of rotation is part of object while in circular motion axis of rotation is separated by object why I'm saying like this we have what example of fan so fan sa axis tachi je blade set tachi rotation ta kai ahe part ahe if you are going to consider only the blades of fan so it will be performing circular motion but when you are going to consider its axle its support then it will perform rotational motion so which kind of motion will be this that is rotational motion while that of if you are considering stone tied with thread and if we are going to rotate it so you will find the stone will going to cover circular path so this type of example will be what circular motion ok so write down this in your notebook As I said, we are going to study in first half circular motion in detail. So let's move further. Now we are going to study first of all characteristic of circular motion. And what does it mean? As you have considered an example in which object is moving in a circular path or along a circumference of circle will be 
circular motion. So you can find here that from point A, suppose this point is A, from this point object will move further this, then this, then this and simultaneously it will going to cover a whole circumference of circle. So from point A if I am going to revolve this object and again if I come to point A so that object has covered this much distance. What does it mean? It has completed one revolution and again it is moving further. What does it mean? It will going to cover this path again. So it will take some kind of time. So when speed of the object is constant, it will going to move in this path. So during this motion, particle repeat its path along the same trajectory. Thus, the motion is periodic. Why I am saying that? Because during the time, that object, that particle is repeating its path. So, what will be your first characteristic? That is, it is periodic motion. What does that mean? That during the motion, the particle repeats its path along the same trajectory. Here, trajectory words stand for path. Path followed by object. Now let's move toward our next characteristic of circular motion. But before going to learn that characteristic, we have to first of all understand what is meant by acceleration and how it is different from velocity. So let's watch a short video. When we are in a stationary car that moves rapidly to gain speed, we get pushed back against our seat. And when brakes are applied, we get pushed ahead. Or when we take a sharp right turn, we are pushed towards the left. These are all situations where we are accelerating. We have all experienced this whether in a car or a bus or while riding a motorbike. Simply put, when velocity changes, we have acceleration. I still haven't defined what acceleration is. I just told you that when velocity changes, there will be acceleration. Okay, let me give you two examples. In the first one, a car is traveling in a straight line at a constant speed of 80 kilometers an hour. And in the second one, a plane is traveling in a straight line at a constant speed of 1000 kilometers an hour. In which case do you think acceleration is involved? None. In both cases, the velocity is not changing at all. Hence, there will be no acceleration in either of the cases. Most people relate acceleration to high speed and that's clearly not true. Acceleration will only exist when there is change in velocity. Do you remember what velocity is? It's speed with direction and it's hence a vector quantity. Why is this important? Let's say a body moves from rest and reaches a velocity of 20 kilometers an hour in 5 seconds. Will acceleration be involved here? Yes, because the velocity is changing. It was zero initially and at the end of 5 seconds, it's 20 kilometers per hour. In another scenario, assume that a body is moving at 30 kilometers an hour and then it moves right at 30 kilometers an hour and continues traveling at the same speed of 30 kilometers per hour. Will there be acceleration in this case? The answer is yes. As the direction is changing, the velocity will also change. The only thing constant in this example is speed. But the velocity changes as the direction changes. So this was the most important concept you had to know about acceleration. It will exist only when there is a change in velocity. In that video, we have understood that acceleration is nothing but change in velocity.
and velocity is nothing but how fast object is moving so the next characteristic is the circular motion is an accelerated motion why we are saying that accelerated motion let's go to your previous example if this is object if that object is moving in this direction so that object is following rectilinear motion but if that object will going before going to take next step if it is changing its direction what does it mean if it is changing its direction on every movement so ultimately it will going to follow circular path that's why our next characteristic define that it is circular motion it is an accelerated motion just because of there will be change in velocity now why i'm saying change in velocity because velocity is nothing but speed in particular direction correct speed in particular direction so here doesn't matter whether i'm going to change my speed or not if i'm traveling with 30 km per hour in circular trajectory but i'm still changing the direction as velocity is nothing but speed and direction so if i'm going to change speed or direction there will be change in velocity okay so your next characteristic will be like this what is that it is an accelerated motion as direction of velocity changes at every instant it is an accelerated motion so up to this we have studied what is meant by circular motion what is meant by rotational motion difference between circular motion and rotational motion and the characteristic of root circular motion okay now as you know to define any kind of motion we should know displacement velocity and acceleration similarly if you want to define motion in circular you have to know few terms like how that object will going to cover some distance what does it mean by by what velocity that is moving and what will be acceleration so here we are going to move toward kinematics of circular motion so here we are kinematics of circular motion but before going to this let's consider object moving in a rectilinear motion rectilinear motion that object is moving in one direction so to define the motion of that object we use word like displacement velocity and acceleration so displacement in translation motion will be denoted by vector s s for the displacement and vector sign as it is a vector which will give you that it is moving in particular direction then next is velocity or you may call it as or linear velocity will be denoted by vector v while that of linear acceleration or acceleration will be denoted by vector a the thing is this three terms is used to define translation motion but we want to know that what are the terms to define circular motion so to define circular motion which are the words first of all the quantities like angular displacement so in circular motion we are going to use word for displacement will be angular displacement denoted by theta as it is changing its angle that's why the term is theta then angular velocity will be denoted by omega vector 
omega so magnitude will be only theta and omega and angular acceleration will be denoted by alpha okay so what is it in translation motion displacement will be denoted by s vector s velocity will be denoted by vector v linear acceleration will be denoted by vector a and in circular motion angular displacement will be denoted by theta the terms will come angular angular velocity vector omega and angular acceleration alpha for what for circular motion okay so now you can see that there is a displacement and here is also displacement velocity and velocity acceleration and acceleration what does it mean there should be a relation there should be a relation which is relates translation motion and circular motion so how we are going to write that now you can see that object performing circular motion obviously it will going to have some center correct and from center object will be at particular distance and that distance will be denoted by vector r so here vector r will denotes what position of object which is performing circular motion so in translation what the word we have vector s for displacement vector v for velocity and vector a for acceleration and in circular we have theta for angular displacement omega for angular velocity and vector alpha for angular acceleration so relation that relation also known as analogous quantities between translation motion and rotational motion will be given by vector s will be equals to vector theta cross vector r okay so this is the relation between translation motion and circular motion for displacement vector s will be equals to vector theta cross vector r similarly for velocity it will be given by omega cross vector r similarly for acceleration it will be given by acceleration will be equals to vector alpha cross vector r so this is a relation for translation motion and circular motion magnitude can be written as in terms of magnitude s will be equals to theta r v will be equals to omega r and a will be equals to alpha r okay so this is what analogy between translation motion and circular motion so now we so this is overall result of translation and rotational motion so here in this table you can find the quantity is given in first column the next expression for both translation and rotational motion and in last column you have relation so look out this it will be helpful for your numerical and derivation purpose how you are going to find the direction of omega as you know that in circular motion direction is changing so to know the direction of omega what you are going to do you are going to use right hand thumb rule which rule right hand thumb rule so this will be what your right hand suppose a object is moving in circular path and it is moving in anti clockwise sense what you have to do you have to consider right hand then this will be fingers and this one will be thumb in this you have to curl your fingers 
of right hand along the sense of rotation. So in this case, the rotation is in this direction. What does it mean? It is in this direction. So you have to curl your fingers in the sense of rotation and then thumb will give you direction of omega. Okay, so now you can see this in this case, the rotation is in this and thumb will give you this direction. Okay, what does it mean? To know the direction of omega, curl the fingers of right hand along the sense of rotation. Okay, with the thumb outstretch, the outstretched thumb then give the direction of omega. Suppose a particle Suppose this particle is moving in this direction, so you have to curl your finger. So what does it mean? That thumb will give you direction of omega, while that of curl finger along the sense of rotation. Okay, so here we have done with circular motion. Okay. As the object is moving in circular path it is going to cover some distance that will known as angular displacement it will going to move with velocity that velocity will be termed as angular velocity and similarly angular acceleration the thing is that after completing one revolution it will again try to move further okay so number of rotations may be more than one and again that particle will going to take some time to complete one revolution or it will take some time to come at this position what does it mean that if a is moving from this point and again going to come to its initial point it will going to take some time and that time is known as period what does it mean the term is known as period of circular motion. The time taken by a particle performing circular motion to complete one revolution. Okay, so we will write definition. So period of circular motion will be denoted by capital T and it is defined as time taken by object to complete one revolution. So let's find equation of that. Now here you can see that object is moving in circular path okay so as you know that velocity is nothing but displacement upon time so if time will move this and velocity will move to this so you will get time will be equals to displacement upon velocity so in circular motion that object is performing circular motion so displacement will be along the circumference of circle so circumference of circle is given by 2 pi r so displacement will be given by 2 pi r and velocity will be given by v so t will be given by 2 pi r divided by v and si unit si unit of period will be given by second and symbol of that second is nothing but s okay so that object is performing circular motion doesn't matter whether in anti-clockwise or clockwise the time taken by object will be period the next thing if it is starting from this will be its initial position so it will going to complete number of revolutions Okay, so the number of revolution completed by object performing circular motion within one minute or within certain time is known as frequency. Okay, now we will find frequency. So we are going to find frequency, frequency of object performing circular motion. So frequency denoted by small n. So the thing is, that frequency is nothing but the number of revolution performed by particle 
it may be one two three or many okay so the symbol is n so formula for that it will be given by n is equals to 1 by period of circular motion so what does it mean 1 by t so as you know from previous equation t is nothing but 2 pi r by v what does it mean n will be equals to 1 by t equals to v by 2 pi r okay so frequency is given by v by 2 pi r and the unit of this is unit will be hertz which one si unit because it is per cycle first cycle second cycle third cycle So we know displacement in circular motion will be angular displacement. Now let's find angular velocity. How you are going to find the angular velocity? Angular velocity. We have relation between linear velocity and angular velocity. What is that? Vector V will be equals to vector omega cross vector R. So this is the relation between linear velocity and angular velocity. So angular velocity is given by linear velocity equals to vector product of angular velocity into vector r. We will consider only magnitude. So in terms of magnitude it will be given by v is equals to omega r. So omega will be given by v by r. As you know from your previous equation, what is that? T is equals to 2 pi r divided by v. So from this equation, you will get v is equals to 2 pi r by t. Okay. So from this equation, you can substitute in this equation, which is nothing but 2 pi r divided by t divided by r so here r and r will going to cancel and you will get omega is equals to 2 pi by t but we know that 1 by t is nothing but frequency so this equation can be written as 2 pi n so angular frequency given by sorry angular velocity is given by 2 pi by t equals to 2 pi into n so this is the relation of angular velocity in terms of period and in terms of frequency.